Hello, my name is Amanda Sandoval and joining me today is Anna Dowd. Thank you for joining us for a part of our virtual training series with the Brockton Area Prevention Collaborative and the Plymouth Youth Development Collaborative. Today's session is called, But Now We're Stressed, a stress and coping skills 101 training that includes information on stress, coping skills, and how to build resiliency. So we all say that we're feeling it all the time, but what actually is stress? Stress is our body's way of responding to a threat or demand. It's important to know that there are varying levels of stress, which range from mild to severe. Ironically, while I was trying to think about something that caused me stress this week, it actually started to cause me to feel stressed out. So that is my example of what can cause someone to feel stressed. All of the basic emotions, joy, sadness, fear, disgust, anger, that we feel on a daily basis can actually contribute or be part of the reason why we feel stress. There are a lot of different things that can cause us to feel stress. These things include schoolwork, disagreements with family and friends, losing someone or something, change, as human beings we do not like change, Trying to balance responsibilities and managing our time appropriately can be really stressful for a lot of people. Our own attitude, a significant other. It's also important to mention that sometimes even happy events can be stressful, like having a baby or planning a party. <clears throat> so then the question becomes, should I stress about stress? Today we're going to categorize it into good stress and bad stress. So stress is normal. It's a healthy feeling to experience. It's actually a necessity in our lives because stress can teach people healthy ways to respond to situations. It can be used as energy. And at times it can even help people to be more successful. Stress can be motivating. It can get us out of unsafe situations and it can even help us grow. So I want you to try and reflect on a stressful event that afterwards made you feel stronger. When we discuss good stress versus bad stress, it's key to point out that stress can reach high levels that are unhealthy. Constant increased stress levels can be damaging over time. Bad stress can become overwhelming, unpleasant, and sometimes really actually even lead to illness. Each person can tolerate different amounts of stress and it's important to be aware of how much stress your body can, can handle and tolerate. Because if you begin to feel fatigued or exhausted, it could actually be related to the stress that you're experiencing. Depending on your age, your gender, and any other individual differences that you might have, stress can have different signs and effects on different people's bodies. So being aware that something doesn't feel right is an essential step to identifying if you're experiencing increased stress. Some signs of stress include change of appetite, change in sleep, irritability, headaches, muscles tightening, difficulty concentrating, and even low self-esteem and confidence. So now that we've talked about what stress is, we need to cover what do we do if we're feeling stressed. So what we mean by that is different things that we engage in, like different behaviors or different coping skills for lack of better words and what we what we mean by that. So when we talk about coping skills, there are two ways that we categorize it. One is adaptive and one is maladaptive. Adapting, adaptive coping skills are those that we engage in that actually help to reduce stress over time and have no negative consequences on our health and well-being. Whereas maladaptive coping skills are those that we engage in that can in the moment help us feel better, but in the long term, they actually don't help to reduce stress and can be damaging to our health and well-being over time. Listed on the screen are 11 different coping skills. They range from going, to a walk, going for a walk to drinking. It's important to note that coping skills happen on a continuum and what's maladaptive for me might not be maladaptive for you. Uh, looking at punching a wall. For some people, that can be an extremely maladaptive coping skill. They could hurt themselves, it actually doesn't help to relieve anger, it can actually put them in a worse headspace. But for someone that's normal behavior is to punch a person or become violent, 
punching a wall could actually be the more adaptive coping skill for them to engage in in the moment. When we talk about maladaptive coping skills as a whole, there are a couple that across the board we consider to be maladaptive. Those include smoking cigarettes, using alcohol, using prescription drugs, self-injury, or overeating. People feel a release when they engage in these behaviors, and that's why they engage in, in hurting themselves or over restricted eating or using substances. But in the long term, it actually can help exacerbate the stress and not reduce it. And it also can lead to other mental health issues that would need to be addressed in the future. One major coping skill that gets used that is maladaptive is substance use. It is one of the number one coping skills that people use when they're feeling stressed. And whether it's help to ease nerves before an event, to cope with losses, or even to better focus when overwhelmed. Many people think that using substances, it can actually be beneficial for them. Though these substances may be effective in the moment, as I've stated, in the long term, they can have disastrous effects on your health and well-being, can actually make stress worse and mimic a lot of symptoms that were mentioned earlier that actually are what your body's natural responses to stress are. Substances such as benzodiazepines, alcohol, and opiates, these substances are all classified as depressants, and they slow down our central nervous system, producing a sedating feeling and can actually cause a person to feel more depressed while they're feeling stressed out. It can also cause symptoms that mimic stress when somebody's coming off of these substances, so it exacerbates the feeling of stress. Other substances such as Adderall, Ritalin, or nicotine are central nervous system stimulants. And what they do is actually speed up the heart rate and speed up breathing. So they can have effects that actually mimic the signs and symptoms of stress as well. Um, a major problem is substances impair a person's judgment and thinking, meaning they are unable to successfully process the stressful situation, making them more susceptible to continued stress or depression once the substance wears off. Over time, mood can worsen, and a problem that was relatively small can turn severe and cause a long-term stress response that is unhealthy to the person. Now that we've talked a whole bunch about maladaptive coping skills, it's crucial to talk about what are adapting coping skills. Adaptive coping skills allow a person to alleviate or minimize some of the physical and emotional symptoms of stress that we can, and we use these to address the underlying cause to find a productive way to move forward. Coping skills can be used in various situations when you're feeling stressed, overwhelmed, sad, or anxious. Some of the coping skills listed here are exercising, listening to music, journaling, hugging a pillow, or even cleaning your room. So it's important right now to ask yourself, what are some coping skills that you can use when you're feeling stressed out? It's, it's crucial to talk also about coping in the moment. So you need to have coping skills to use at any time. If your coping skill is to go for a walk, but you're in a stressful situation when you can't go for a walk, it's important for you to have backup coping skills to use. Something like uh, breathing or humming or saying a mantra, those can be done in almost any situation and could be used in situations where you can't use your number one coping skill. Also, they need to be manageable. So say you want to make reading your coping skill, but you really don't like reading, that's not a manageable one to employ. And it might be time to review the list on the previous slide and come up with some other ones that you might be able to find enjoyable. Lastly, it's important to practice. Just like everything in your life, you're not going to be good at it unless you practice it. So when you're starting to feel stressed out, starting to journal or starting to count to 10, it might feel uncomfortable at first, but that's why practicing can actually help make you more successful at coping with your stress. Another great way is being proactive. It helps the body be healthier and helps us be more prepared to handle stress, demanding situations, and helps avoid unhealthy situations. When we're saying be proactive, we're talking about things that you can do on a daily basis that can aid and help mitigating some of the negative effects of stress. One big thing is exercising. Even if it's just going for a 10 minute walk a day, getting your body out and moving can really help to reduce some things that cause us stress and also give us a coping skill that we can use in, a moment, in the moment. Sleeping is something that we all have to do, but a lot of us don't get enough or we get too much sleep. So practicing healthy sleep habits is crucial in preparing your body to be able to handle a stressful situation. Having hobbies that we find enjoyment in can help alleviate some of the more stressful things in our life and also can be used as a coping skill.
people say that laughter is the best medicine. Laughter can truly have some short-term effects that can help reduce stress. It helps oxygenate the body and can help us put us put us in a better headspace to move forward and not get stuck on stressful events. Lastly, eating healthy. Eating healthy is something that um, for people can be a challenging thing to do in at all times. But some important things to note is if you're feeling stressed out to avoid certain foods like sugar and caffeine, which can, which can actually make some of the symptoms of stress worse and put you into a worse physical space than you have been in. So the last piece that we need to talk about is resiliency. So resiliency is the ability to recover from difficulties one may experience. Some people are born more resilient than others, and that might mean that they're just be better able to adapt and survive in difficult situations. Although some people are born more adaptive, that doesn't mean that you can't work on resiliency. So although some people are born more resilient than others, there are ways that you can foster and build resiliency within yourself. Here are 10 ways that you can build resiliency within yourself. These might include making connections, Assisting other people in times of need can also really benefit the helper. It can be one of the most fulfilling things to give to other people. Good relationships with close family members, friends, and other people are really important because accepting help and support from those who care about you will and will listen to you can strengthen your resilience. Some people find that being active in civic groups, faith-based organizations, or other local groups can really provide them that social support and help that they might need in order to reclaim hope in their life. Try to avoid seeing crises as unbearable. I know it's easy to say, but if you can change that mindset to you know, look at things as though you can't change the fact that a highly stressful situation happened or is going to happen, but you can change how you interpret the situation and the way that you respond to what happens in those events. Try looking beyond the present to how future circumstances may be a little bit better. Try to accept change. Certain goals may no longer be attainable as a result of certain adverse situations that happen in your life. So accepting circumstances that cannot be changed can really help you focus on the circumstances that you can alter. Move towards goals. Develop some realistic goals. Do small goals in order to achieve your large goals. Do something regular, regularly, even if that seems like a small account accomplishment that enables you to move towards those large goals. So instead of focusing on tasks that seem unachievable, ask yourself, what's one thing that I know that I can accomplish, accomplish today that helps me move in the direction that I want to go in? Take decisive actions. Act on adverse situations as much as you can. Take decisive actions rather than detaching completely from problems and stresses and wishing things would just go away. Look for opportunities to find yourself. People often learn something about themselves and may find that they've grown in some respect as a result of their struggle with loss. Many people who have experienced tragedies, hardships, they've reported that they have better relationships, greater sense of strength, even while feeling vulnerable, increased sense of self-worth, self a more developed spirituality, and even a heightened appreciation for life. If you can nurture a positive view of yourself, that can help you develop confidence in, in your ability to solve problems. It can help you, you know, trust your instincts to help build re resiliency within yourself. Keep things in, in, in perspective. Even when facing very painful events, try to consider the stressful situation in a broader context and keep a long-term perspective. Try to avoid blowing the event out of proportion. Um, that can be really helpful. And then maintaining a hopeful outlook. An optimistic outlook enables you to expect that things, good things will happen in your life. And you can try to visualize what you want rather than worrying about what you're fearing. And take care of yourself. 
pay attention to your own needs and feelings. You can't take care of anybody else if you can't take care of yourself. Engage in activities that you enjoy, activities that you find relaxing. Try to exercise regularly. Taking care of yourself helps to keep your mind and your body primed to deal with situations that require resilience. Positive self-affirmations. So we're encouraging you to talk to yourself the way you'd talk to someone that you love. Because a lot of times we talk to ourselves in this negative way, in this negative tone. So if you can alter the way that you talk to yourself through positive self-affirmations, that could in turn also increase your ability to be resilient. So it can help us feel better. It can help us reduce stress. It helps with increasing your confidence, your self-esteem, and even your self-worth. So oftentimes we forget about that important person in our life, ourself. So do, do you say something positive about yourself on a daily basis? We challenge you to try to wake up in the morning and say one positive self-affirmation. So we have listed 10 positive self-affirmations that you can say just as an example for you if you're not sure where to start. And sometimes if you continue to say something to yourself, you begin to believe it and it begins to sort of in turn change your behavior and the way that you feel. So one thing that I like to share is that my three-year-old daughter, I have her look in the mirror and say, I am beautiful, I am kind, I am talented, and I give her different self-affirmations to repeat to herself in the mirror. And then she yells at the mirror and nobody can tell me different. And starting that at a young age, I think will be really important for helping to build confidence within herself as an older teenager and young adult. So 10 positive self-affirmations that we have for examples are wake up and be awesome. <laughs> it's okay for me to make mistakes. Forgiving yourself for making mistakes. This is how we learn. Positivity is a choice. I am prepared to succeed. I think for myself. I am capable. I get to decide what I believe about myself. I am in control of my reactions. I choose to be happy and I like myself. So those are just 10 positive self-affirmations that you can steal from us and try to use them in your daily life um, and see how you change your feelings change over time. So we thank you for joining us today. Um, here is the list of some contact information if you had any questions or if you wanted any further tips. You have our email and our phone number as well as our website, Facebook, and Instagram handle. So thank you for joining us and we hope that you're well. Thank you.